Quick tips. See the video description for timestamps index. If you are watching on YouTube, auto-generated subtitles are available in English. See notes at the end of the video, for quick recap and extra info. Keep an eye on the visual hints throughout the video. Key shortcuts are displayed at the top right of the screen. Mouse button clicks are shown as colors around the cursor. Yellow and blue for the left and right buttons, respectively. In an earlier tutorial named How to Precisely Change Color, I've mentioned that black and white are special cases. Some artists do not even consider them to be colors at all. Others consider either black or white to be a color, but not both. Today we'll deal with turning white into black, and vice versa. We'll also see how we can turn any color to either black or white. Here is the pictures we are going to use. We'll start with a cyan car, changing it both to white and black. Next we'll change another car from white to black. Finally we'll turn a t-shirt from black to white. We start with this lovely cyan Porsche. First we need to isolate the parts we want to change. One or more selection tools may be used. Like for example the smart selection brush. However, we really need to take our time and make an accurate selection. For me, the pen tool is ideal for this. But if you are not familiar with it, do your best with your favorite tool. No matter the tool, we should not select parts like the windows, the door handle, the mirrors, etc. I have already made this selection, and I have saved it in the alpha channel of this image. So let me just load it. By the way, the tutorial I mentioned in the beginning of this video, briefly shows how you can do that, so you may want to check it out. Here it is. It includes only the parts to be changed. I made this selection with the pen tool. I should probably make a video about it, but anyway, we are now ready to duplicate the image in the layers palette, and mask the duplicate to the selection. There. I'll name the newly created group, Painted Parts. As usual, in Paint Shop Pro there are more than one ways of doing things. Let me start with the Channel Mixer Adjustment Layer, because I think not many people know about it. By just adding it with its default settings, it makes the car black. Different images give different results. But as long as monochrome is checked, the result will always be a gray scale but it retains the color information internally. By adjusting the constant slider to the left or to the right, the image gets darker or brighter, respectively. It is a sensitive slider, so extreme changes give extreme results. The best thing is that, despite being a grayscale, the color channels can still be manipulated, even separately. This allows us to fine-tune grayscale details, until we get the result we are going for. See for example how the car highlights are affected, as I'm adjusting the color channels individually. It is a powerful tool, but perhaps not a very intuitive one. Depending on the image, the channel mixer may give better or worse results, compared to other methods. In any case, if the image is of lesser quality, with the blacks or the whites clipped, the results will be disappointing, regardless of the method. I'll now show how we can use curves, to get similar results. Let me add a curves adjustment layer. If you are not familiar with curves, here is a really brief overview of this little chart over here. On the baseline, all the way to the left, we have the blacks of the image. All the way to the right, we have the whites. In between, we have the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. By moving the blacks to the right, we darken the dark areas. By moving the whites downwards, we darken the bright areas. Everything before the black point becomes black. For example, when I set the black point beyond the midtones, any shade variations exist only between the highlights and the whites. We saw that by moving the whites downwards, we darken them. To brighten them beyond their original value, we can move them to the left. 
just like we moved the blacks to the right. In either case, we may lose image details in the dark and the bright areas. The so-called clipping. Actually our blacks are already clipped, by a great deal. In this photo, the original color of the car is quite bright. So we can't really completely eliminate the clipping of the blacks, without the car looking dark gray, instead of black. But we will improve it, in a few moments. First we should desaturate the car. There are a few ways. I'll do it with an HSL adjustment layer. Now the clipping in the blacks is more apparent. We can improve it, by revisiting our curves layer, and adjust it with less aggressive settings. Something like that. I like it better like this, but feel free to experiment more. Let me now show you how we can use the curves to make the car white. By moving the blacks upwards, we brighten the dark areas. Exactly the opposite of what we did before. We also want to lighten the bright areas, so we move the whites to the left. Once again, we have to deal with clipping, especially with this photo where the highlights are already clipped. We can add another point on the curve, to get better control of the intermediate shades, between our adjusted black and white values. Something like that. We can also set the blend mode of our curves layer to luminance legacy, so it only affects the lightness. But since we have already desaturated the car, it won't make any difference. Let me now replace the curves layer with a levels one. This is probably the most intuitive method. As with curves, we have the blacks on the left, the whites on the right, and the midtones in the middle. Levels is a trimmed down version of curves. It only allows horizontal adjustments. So, we can lighten the whites, and darken the blacks, by moving them to the left and to the right, respectively. We can adjust the shades between our black and white points, by moving the midtones. Left for brightening, right for darkening. Once again, extreme adjustments result in clipping. But in our case we can't avoid it completely. Later on, in the t-shirt section of the video, I'll show a way to recover some of the clip details. The same technique may be used in any of the three methods. For now, let me finish making the car white, using levels. There it is. Not bad, I like it so far. Now let me hide the levels layer, and create a new one above it. I'll use this new levels layer to make the car black. The concept is exactly the same. The main difference is that I'm now moving the points to the opposite direction, on the baseline. There we have it. But, it looks kinda off, doesn't it? It is too desaturated, compared to the rest of the car. For example, it lacks the bluish tint we see on the windows and other parts. Here is an easy way to add some bluish accent on our black. In the HSL adjustment layer, we can ease off the desaturation a little bit. Meaning, we can increase the saturation slider just a tad. Say for example, from minus 100 to something like minus 93. Yes, I think it looks much better. Since we now have a little color accent, we may also want to fine-tune the levels adjustments. Like so. Let me quickly fine-tune the white color, too. Okay, good. Now, I want to make the accent of the unpainted parts of the car, a little more greenish. I could make a new selection, just for them, but let me show another way. In the alpha channel of this image, I didn't save just a selection of the painted parts. I also saved another selection I made, outlining the whole car. First I'm loading the selection of the full car. Next, I load the, the selection of just the painted parts, but inside the dialog I switch the operation mode to, subtract from current selection. This will result in selecting just the unpainted parts. As shown in the preview pane, over here. It does, indeed. 
I can now duplicate the background image, and mask the duplicate on the unpainted parts of the car. Like so. There are lots of ways to adjust the color. I'm using a white balance adjustment layer here. Adding a bit of green and yellow in the midtones is all I need for this. Yes, it blends better with the rest of the scene now. You may also want to add a subtle color tint on the painted parts of the car, but I'll leave it like this now. I think we are done. To convert white to black, we can use any of the techniques we have seen already. Feel free to try any of them, or even all of them. The important thing is to start with a picture of high quality, without clipping in the dark and the bright areas. For this one, I have used curves. Since there is nothing new to show here, I will briefly explain again how we can go, from this, to this. The two groups in the layers palette, are the masks of the painted and the unpainted parts of the car. Using the pen too, I made the selection of the painted parts first, and saved it to the alpha channel. Next, I made a selection of the full car, and saved it to the alpha channel too. Then by using the subtract from selection option, inside the dialog of the load selection command, I had Paint Shop Pro creating the accessories selection for me. I saved that to the alpha channel as well. To create the paint only mask, I loaded the corresponding selection from the alpha channel, I duplicated the background, and I masked it to the active selection. Like so. Next, I desaturated the painted parts, with an HSL adjustment layer. Finally, I turned it to black, with a curves adjustment layer. Here is the curve I used. Then I noticed that the unpainted parts were looking a little too bluish. So, I loaded the corresponding selection from the alpha channel, and I created a mask group out of it. I renamed the group to accessories, and I used a white balance adjustment layer, to remove some blue from the shadows. Like so. And that was pretty much it. I think it worked out really well. Black to white is arguably the most challenging case. Especially if the image is not of high quality. The techniques remain the same, but the workflow might be a little different. As you can see in the layers palette, for this t-shirt I'm using both curves and levels, at the same time. I have also skipped the desaturation step, because the tea is already desaturated. Lastly, you can't see it right now, but I've also used the curves and levels masks, to bring back some of the details which were clipped out by those adjustments. Let me first show how the white looks, with these adjustments. Okay, in Paint Shoip Pro, all adjustment layers come with their own mask. It is this thumbnail, over here. Let me now clear the masks of both layers, by filling them with solid white, and hide the levels layer. We'll focus on the curves layer first. The problem here is that I've already started clipping the highlights, but the t-shirt remains too dark. At this point, I can't even adjust a middle point, without clipping the whites even more. I could add more points on the curve, but things would get messy. I want to brighten the midtones further, without affecting the highlights. They are clipped enough, already. That's why I introduced a new, levels adjustment layer. By the way, it could be another curves layer. But levels is more than enough for what we are after. As you can see, I can now brighten the midtones, without affecting the already clipped highlights and the whites. That's great. It is time to bring back the clip details. At least some of them. More specifically, the details on the shoulder, and maybe a few more on the way. We know it is the curves that caused most of the clipping, so we'll work on the mask of the curves. Just like we do with any other mask. Black conceals, white reveals. We need to adjust the brush according to the texture of the t-shirt. It is no longer as smooth as it was before the brightening. This means we should increase the step, and decrease the density of the brush. I'll set the hardness to zero, and opacity to a very low value. 
This will give me more control with my brush strokes. However, I will keep adjusting them, as I go. Way better. Now that we fixed it, we can also fine tune our levels layer. And as a final touch, we can also work a bit with the levels mask. Bringing back even more details. I can do this all day, so I better stop. I think it looks quite decent. So this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, as much as I did. To read this, you may want to pause the video. To change any color to black or white, first we desaturated it. Then we applied one or more curves, levels, or channel mixer adjustment layers. We tackled produced clipping, by editing the masks of the adjustment layers. Pre-existing clipping cannot be fixed, so for best results, we should always start with a high-quality picture. Thank you for watching.